Hi everyone, my name is Amar Salman. I'm a PhD candidate at Syracuse University. I'll be presenting our paper Extending CNN Classification Capabilities Using a Novel Feature to Image Transformation Algorithm. This work was co-authored by uh, Uday Salman, PhD candidate at uh, Calton University, and Garrett Katz, professor at Syracuse University. So the problem that we're targeting here, um, well, basically, uh, most of us heard of convolutional neural networks and um, their uses. They're really useful for image-based classification. Um, they've been used for uh, many medical research, for example, tumor detection or organ segmentation. Um, they have a lot of uses on both the research world and the commercial world, like Tesla cars, for example. Um, the issue comes is that they're not directly suitable for numerical feature problems, where you have a feature vector consisting of uh, numbers essentially, um, you just don't feed that to CNNs and there isn't a way of converting that properly to a CNN. Um, usually people use DNNs for that, but DNNs are not always successful in such problems. So we are providing an alternative here. So what we aim to do is convert uh, numerical feature vectors into image representations where um, each uh, number is uniquely represented to provide successful uh, CNN classification. So our solution is basically um, <coughs> an algorithm, feature to image transformation, um, which should have a unique representation of every number in the data set that you find. Um, it should be optimized for CNN filters, and it should be dynamic to work with several data sets. So it's basically generic. You can just apply it to any problem where you have a feature vector of numbers. <coughs> the general system layout would look something like this. So we have a bunch of sensors and we, um, do, we perform row data collection um, in a time series manner. Um, then we feed the time series data into feature extraction algorithm, um, which gives us a feature vector consisting of uh, numbers. Um, we then feed that to our fit algorithm, uh, which generates feature images that we give to the CNN and then be done with the classification. So this is one example of an image generated by our FIT algorithm. Uh, what we have here is, it represents one instance from a data set. Uh, in this image, we have a bunch of um, micro images, um, 126 to be precise, which are which is the length of the feature vector that we have in this data set. So um, in every micro image, what we can see are different things. Uh, for instance, in the <coughs> For instance, in the center of the image, uh, of the micro image, we see a gradient, and uh, the gradient has a brightness level, which varies from uh, one micro image to another. Um, we also have a rotation, and um, we have a background color, and finally, we have an in uh, a border intensity value. <coughs> each, each one of these has a significance, and we'll get to that in a moment. So, how does it uh, exactly work? The first thing that we have to do is take a number, basically, from the feature vector. So let's say this number is uh, X capital, right? So the first thing that we need to do is um, represent, change its representation in terms of small x and P. And uh, essentially, small x is a three-digit representation of the number. Um, and uh, P is the exponent, which basically, if we multiply small x by 10 to the power of P, we get the original number. So for example, we have uh, 45905. Oh, uh, it's represented as 459 multiplied by 10 to the power of 2, which means small x is 459 and P is 2. So as, as small x and p are what we need to, for, to calculate everything um, in the microimage that we have for every um, feature. So the first thing that we start off with uh, i. Uh, so i of x is essentially the brightness of the gradient. So it goes from black to i. Um, and uh, i can have a maximum value of 255 because that's the maximum brightness allowed by grayscale um, gradients. Uh, which means that I on its own is not enough because 255, the range is not that representative of, num of different numbers. 
therefore we need R which is a rota uh, rotation now R is mostly based on P which is the exponent as we uh, explained earlier and it basically rotates the gradient counterclockwise or clockwise uh, depending on uh, on P obviously um, to reflect uh, its effect essentially um, the dependence of R on X is due to the fact that X can be up to uh, 999 because of three digit three digit representation and not all of it can fit into I so anything that of anything excess of 255 will be reflected as well in the rotation <coughs> but obviously rotation on its own and intensity the brightness of the gradient are not enough because if um, if for example uh, we have a numerical feature that has a rotation alpha for example and another feature that has rotation alpha plus 360 degrees then these will have the same rotation but they have different significance right so that's why we come up with the uh, micro image border intensity to reflect uh, these differences so what we do for a given feature we take the maximum rotation across the entire data set just for that feature and um, we normalize the border intensity accordingly so the feature with the maximum rotation will get the brightest border and the feature with um, the least uh, rotation will get the darkest border um, okay but that's still not enough to reflect all to make it unique enough so this is why we actually set the background based on the direction of rotation because if you rotate clockwise or counterclockwise you have to tell the difference between those two counterclockwise can be um, uh, cl uh, clockwise happens when you have a feature uh, where P is negative so in order to do so um, we invert the background color to reflect this change and finally, um, you could have negative valued features or you could have positive valued features. So you need to be able to tell the difference between the two, which is why we added a number sign on the top left corner, which is enough for the CNN filters to recognize. And therefore, the final number of uh, unique representations for every micro image would be uh, 2 multiplied by range of NF, which we explained here. Uh, multiply by range of R uh, of I and the course of R. All right. So to do the testing, um, we've picked two uh, separate datasets. One is fingerprint uh, spoofing. Uh, we've made this dataset in another work accepted in this conference. Um, it has 426 instances, lower number of instances, but high number of features, um, 126. Uh, two classes, force or not force, so it's a binary problem. And we have another set, EEG I state, which are, uh, also is a binary problem. Our, uh, the states are closed or open for the eyes. It has 15,000 instances and only 14 features. This one is a much more difficult one for normal DNS, as we will show later, due to the small number of features and their nature, where the numbers are really hard to tell apart. So for testing, we actually performed testing uh, and compared against a DNN. Um, so uh, and we also tried different uh, several uh, CNN uh, configurations, playing with the mini batch size and the filters by layer number. Um, so essentially, uh, our best CNN result was uh, for the first data set was when we used mini batch size of 64 and filter, uh, filter and 64 filters per layer. Uh, we got about 94.6% uh, uh, percent accuracy. In comparison, the DNN was at 95%, which is almost uh, on the same level. Um, but uh, for the second data set, we see at uh, the actual difference here, where our approach scored 92.12%, while the uh, DNN was near random because it's a binary problem at 57.7. Um, as I said, the nature of the data set is much harder to tell apart for the DNN because the numbers are crumped up and um, their distribution is really difficult. So the DNN pretty much failed in that. But our unique representation of the images made it, pos made it for the, uh, possible for the CNN to properly um, um, tell the difference between these uh, these instances. So this shows the strength of our fit algorithm regardless of the actual uh, feature vectors that were used or the uh, regardless of the um, 
feature extraction algorithm that are applied mainly because the EGI dataset features come ready from the authors we don't know the original signals <coughs> so um, moving on we've done um, several other tests um, the CNN ablation study um, basically we applied two types of noises or two categories of noises the first one was applied on the original signal and the second one was applied on the generated images so for the first one uh, we've done uh, multiple types of testing where we trained on noiseless tested on noisy data we trained on mixed and tested on noisy and then we trade on noisy alone and tested on noisy and here are the results but the one that stands out the most is that when we when we trained on noiseless data and tested on noisy data where the signal to noise ratio on the original numbers was one to one the CNN was still able to uh, have only a 23% uh, classification error rate which which is uh, far from random which is what you normally ex expect. So this shows the significance of the fit algorithm. Uh, the image and uh, so the image noise types were just um, for extra testing, essentially. So in conclusion, um, the fit generated uh, highly distinguishable images, which provided a successful classification for DNN, and it can also provide better classification than DNN, as we evident by the other data set second data set and uh, it can be applied for more complex time series classification because of its highly distinguished nature uh, it can also be applied for medical signals and possibly even physics experimentation i'd like to take a moment of acknowledgement for uh, professor salman salman from palestine for helping uh, review and uh, correct the manuscript and that's it thanks for listening <laughs>